Now let's take a look at a problem that does involve the double slit experiment. So remember what you learned about the double slit experiment. It starts off with a barrier with two small holes in it, and the distance between the holes is important. We call that D. It's the slit separation. If we allow the light rays to pass only through the holes, and they go to a screen that is some distance away, we're going to have alternating bright spots and dark spots. These, this is the interference pattern. The whole fact that we don't just have two bright spots directly opposite our openings is a sign that the light is behaving like a wave. It's interfering just like the wave from the sound waves in the other video that I did for you, the way they interfered with each other. So this is what we're told about our scenario. We have we're told that we have monochromatic light. Remember that it is important that the light that comes through the two openings is of a single wavelength and also in phase, it has a constant phase relationship. Otherwise, the interference pattern can't be stable. So we're told the light is monochromatic, so that means it only has a single wavelength. And the first order max, and so the, the zero order max would be straight in the middle of the two openings. That would be right here. So we're saying the next bright spot, which is the first order spot, is at an angle of 10 degrees. And here we're showing what that 10 degrees looks like. We want to know, based on that fact, what is the angle for the second order max and what is the angle for the first order minimum? Finally, can we figure out how many bright spots you're going to have? What's the highest order maximum that you have? So I've written down some information that's really helpful for us as we try to solve this problem. Notice I've also labeled the two distances that the light rays have to travel, S1 and S2. Just as it was true in another example that I did, the difference in those two path lengths is critical. It turns out that for, um, for this, this setup, for the Young's double slit experiment, the change or the difference in the two path lengths, that is, um, delta L is S2 minus S1, that's actually also equal to the separation times the sine of theta. And so you can see a, an explanation of that in your text. So d sine theta, because that's the path length difference, is always going to be the quantity that we compare to the wavelengths in order to determine if we have constructive interference or destructive interference. For constructive interference, we need that difference to be equal to some integer of a, path, of a wavelength, so m times the wavelength. m is equal to 0, 1, 2, et cetera, and that number would be the order. So because this is first order, it refers to m equals 1. The destructive interference, of course, the um, condition for destructive interference is different. The difference in the path length now has to be like a half a wavelength, three halves a wavelength, five halves a wavelength, something like that. We can write it in a way that's sort of similar to this by writing it as m plus 1 half, where m, again, is 0, 1, 2, et cetera. All right, so those are the basic things that we're going to use. Now, we're told for the first order max, all that we know is theta is 10 degrees. So first order max means m is equal to 1. So we know that d sine of 10 degrees is equal to 1 times the wavelength. Now, as I look at this, I might feel like I don't have enough information. I don't know what the wavelength of this light is, and I don't know what the diff D is. But I notice that I could actually write D in terms of the wavelength. D is equal to a wavelength over the sine of 10 degrees, and that ends up to be 5.76 wavelengths. You know what? And that'll be good enough for me because now I know how to relate D to the wavelength, and then I only have the wavelength as an unknown in my problem, and I think I'll be okay. So I use that information, and now I want to find out what the second order max is. Second order 
is m equals 2. So d sine theta is 2 times the wavelength. d, I found, was 5.76 times the wavelength times the sine of theta is equal to 2 lambda. And if I solve for theta, I get 2, la two lambda over 5.76 lambda. The lambdas cancel out, and I get 0 0.347. If I take the inverse sine to figure out my angle, I found that this angle that has a sine of 0.347 is actually equal to 20.3 degrees. So I did that. Now for the first order minimum, that is the condition is This is also m equals zero, actually, because it's the first one that's going to occur. That means that d sine theta is equal to lambda over two. So sine of theta is equal to lambda over two times 5.76 lambda. And then I can rearrange, or I mean, I can take the inverse sine of this and get the angle, which ends up to be 4.98 degrees. So what we have here is the idea is we, we know that there will be a bright spot at theta equals zero. At 10 degrees is the, first, um, is the first bright spot, but somewhere pretty much in between those at 4.98 degrees is the first total maximum. And then the second total ma uh, m maximum, uh, I'm sorry, 4.98 is where there's a total minimum. I think I said maximum by mistake. The second order, um, the next bright spot is at 20.3 degrees. So two bright spots are at 10 degrees, 20.3, and we found that there's a dark spot at 4.98. We didn't actually find all of them, but that's how but we found the ones that we were asked for. So what would be the biggest theta that you could have? Well, you can see as we move away and move up on either side, theta is going to get bigger and bigger. And so to find the highest order maximum possible, we say, well, what if theta was equal to 90? Because that's really the biggest it can be. And so we say d sine of 90 is equal to m times lambda. As the angle gets larger, the order, of course, increases. So what we want to figure out here is if I let the angle be 90, which of course is too big because that's like perpendicular to this midline, but it's a good way to find this value, then I can say what would be the m that would make that true? And that'll help me find the highest order max that I can have. So I have d is 5.76 lambda times the sine of 90, which is just 1, is equal to m lambda. So you can see that here, m corresponding to 5.76 is really what we found. Now, m has to be an integer. And so because of that, we have to choose the next integer that's lower than 5.76. And so the highest order max that we could actually have would be 5. And so that means we would have a bright spot in the middle, and then we would have five pairs on either side of that bright central bright spot. And that would be the end of the interference pattern that we would see. We would never be able to have the sixth one because we found that the largest one we could have was the fifth. So hopefully that helps. Um, this was sort of a tricky problem because of the fact that we didn't give us a lot of information. We never found out what the wavelength was. We never found out what the separation was, but we were able to find how they were related to each other and were able to move forward and solve our problem anyway.